you can see you draw this trend line across. And one of the things I was noticing is how you broke above and you closed above this level. The popular thing to say at some of the some of the summits that I was at and so forth. So so I definitely took some early flack, but but I've always been someone who who relies on the charts. The charts are really the purest form of truth we have as investors. And then human emotion kind of clouds that, right? So people get overly bullish and they just believe in it so much that very many people don't want to hear that it could come down. For me, I just look at the charts and like, I may not want it to come down either, but if the charts are saying it, it is what it is, you know? So, so bottom line is what, one of the things that, well, there are multiple things, but one of the things that stood out to me is that historically, when people get so, so bullish on anything, and I've been through the tech bubble with the dot coms, the 2007 bubble, I've seen bubbles in oil and collapses, and you notice a kind of a pattern developing. And what that is, is when everyone gets to this kind of loud, crazy, kind of hyped up bullishness, it's usually near the end of a run. And what we saw in Bitcoin and what I saw in Bitcoin was that you had this double top and that you were seeing this kind of craziness envelope this crypto sector. So for instance, we had meme coins that were that really were created as jokes that were multi-billion dollar market caps. And you had thousands upon thousands of cryptocurrencies with very little use case. And I know, again, looking at the dot coms when I was early in my career, that you had a lot of dot coms like that, but their stocks went up, 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 up. And then they collapsed and most of them went out of business, right? So it was a very kind of similar portrayal of what was going on there. So number one, that was an issue. And then if I bring up my chart here, I want to show you guys this, is that this was something that really kind of stuck out with me is that if you looked at the previous high from um, April of 2021, you can see you draw this trend line across. And one of the things I was noticing is how you broke above and you closed above this level and then you came right back in. And then again, later on, it tried to break up. And again, it failed. You never got two consecutive closes higher above this high pivot. Now, to me, that screams double top. It also screams institutional uh, investors and whales selling into it. Because if you looked at the kind of the hype and the bullishness of the retail investor, this should have been off to the races and just blowing to the upside. I mean, massive move up. And it wasn't. And you have to be as a trader, someone who steps back and says, wait a minute, what's going on here? Why isn't this you know, shooting to the upside? Why does it keep coming down under that level? A couple other things that were kind of bothering me. Number one, um, you had to look at kind of the hype in terms of like the Super Bowl, right? So into February of this year, when we were already off those highs, there were so many Super Bowl commercials. That was an issue for me, mainly because, and again, we're talking crypto commercials, because in 2000 with the dot coms, it was known as the dot com Super Bowl with amazing amounts of, of commercials for dot coms. And we know what happened after. Another thing that kind of stood out to me, and I can show you guys this on the chart here. Let's go to um, let's go to a bigger time frame. So remember this kind of M pattern. And then one of the things here, take a look at this. If I go to Amazon's chart and we're going to go to a larger time frame and go all the way back to the dot com bubble here. Look at the pattern here as I get it in my look at this pattern on Amazon. All right. So this was the pattern on Amazon. You see that same M top. With over here, it was a slightly higher high, just like with Bitcoin. And then look at what happened when the dot coms collapsed. So again, the similarities were just so intense in the crypto market to the dot com era um, with the hype, with all the craziness that it was to me so hard to ignore. And then you put into effect, and this is the last thing I'll say, I don't want to draw it out too much, but then you put it into effect the fact that the Fed was saying they were going to withdraw liquidity from the market. So if you needed a cherry on top, that was the cherry on top to signal that we were going to head down. And obviously, you have the four-year cycles in Bitcoin, so that tells you 80 to 85% correction. So at a bare minimum, I was thinking 20,000, which was the 2017 high. And now I'm even looking for, after a bounce here, maybe even a move down to 12,000. A super important point is that there's always opportunity. And, and I'll be honest with you, like, you know, I was short at the highs. I didn't hold all the way down to the lows. That's not the type of trader I am. Um, but there have been multiple periods where I've gone short and long Bitcoin in a bear market. And I think the biggest thing about a bear market, whether it's stocks, commodities, or crypto, is you have to remember it becomes more of a trader's market. So it's not a market where you just close your eyes 
throw a dart at the dartboard and just make money, right? You actually have to do a little work here. And that's where the charts come in. So we did see on the charts multiple opportunities where there were great trading setups, right? So, so if we just go here and let me bring up my chart again, um, you can see here, for instance, let me put in some, some parallels and I love my parallel lines, but you could see right here, for instance, there's a, there's a, a parallel line right here. And if you drop it down, you get this low here, this low here, and this low here. You get this high and this high right here. So, I mean, there were there were opportunities to trade this. In addition, a secondary parallel, in fact, was right here where you have this area and you drop this down and I can extend this a little bit. And you can see how you kind of played pinball with these upper and lower levels back and forth. So long here, short, long, short, long here. And then finally it broke down. You had to be very quick to exit. And then you hit here, you got a bounce. And then finally the breakdown here. So I guess my point is this, is that in a bull market, yes, you don't have to do any work. You can just sit back and make money. But bear markets are really where the best traders in the world are showcased. And if you want to make money in a bear market, you can go long and short at various times, but you have to be able to read the charts to be safe. And again, it is a tough environment to trade, but there are absolutely opportunities. So I think it's important to note that I do think we get a significant bounce off of this 20,000 Pierce level. And again, I mean, the obvious one that everyone was talking about was the 20,000 high from 2017 here. It was just sub 20,000. We did pierce that. That's very normal. So if you're a new trader or someone that doesn't understand this, think about this. Everyone, once we got close to 20,000, everyone started to say, okay, it's going to 20,000 and then that's going to be the low. So what ended up happening is investors bought just above 20,000, which created us, you know, if you remember before he pierced 20,000, it kind of stayed there for a little while and bounced a little bit. And then everyone else put their stops on their long positions just below 20,000. Inevitably, the way markets work is it's going to flush out those weak handed longs, making meaning it's going to go below 20 and they're going to freak out. They'll dump because they get scared. And it's also going to take out those stops. And then once you do that, then it can finally get a bounce. So, again, if we're looking at the chart here, you can see a clear, clear level right here. It did pierce. Now it's back above. But there were other signals as well. One of my favorites is this one. It's called a measured move. And I use it in technical analysis all the time. If you take the distance from this drop, and you can see this was pretty much a vertical drop. This is where Terra Luna collapsed. This is about a $14,000 drop on Bitcoin. If you take the high here and drop 14,000, you actually get the almost to the penny low right there. And again, that refers to a measured move, meaning this drop is equal to this drop as well. You then take into account, you have this pivot low right here. You've got a nice reversal green candle. And my guess is Bitcoin has upside to about 25,000, maybe 28 to 30,000 over the next two to four weeks. Um, at which point I do think, like I said, we have one more leg down to go, which would take us into this 12,000, 13,000 range. So again, you know, somewhere in this vicinity is where I'm looking for it to go next. Um, but again, I am long right here. You know, I am I am a buyer of Bitcoin. I was buying when it pierced twenty thousand, and I do expect to make some money, and hopefully, it gets back to at least twenty five before the next leg down. In which case, I'll be looking to buy around twelve thousand as your next target. So I know people always say, "Oh, you know, the big money they manipulate," but the bottom line is, big money and a stock like Apple. They're not getting freaked out when it when Apple drops 10% or 20%, right? They're in there for the long term. These pension funds, they're going to hold Apple. And, and that's stabilizing for a stock like Apple, which still is de decently volatile. But my point is, again, that the, the more money adopts, the more people in, the more stable the asset becomes, right? So I think that's one of the keys here is you need to see adoption. You also need to see regulation. I know regulation is a horrible term in crypto, but if you ever want big money to adopt Bitcoin and start using it and, and it become more mature, you have to see some basic regulation where you can't have Terra Luna type blowups where people lose billions of dollars and you can't see, you know, the kind of the hacking and the stealing and people are just losing their money left and right, like can happen in cryptocurrency accounts. One of my biggest things for crypto accounts is FDIC insurance here in the US. That's where if, if you get robbed, basically, the government actually is insuring your account up to a certain amount. I think that is so imperative for the crypto sector to get big money to feel comfortable in getting in.